Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 407, Women, Testosterone Pellets, and Good Health. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So one of the questions that most frequently gets asked when people contact you about pellets and, and ask you, like, does this really work? And what does it cost? And how will it make me feel? Is they ask you about weight. Will it make me put on weight? Because uh, women of a certain age often begin to thicken All up. All women of any age. <laughs> are concerned about weight. Yeah, are because concerned about weight. Because our culture is so mm-hmm. focused on that. Mm-hmm. But what they want to know is, if, is this a treatment that will cause my weight to go up and increase? Mm-hmm. Because if it is, even if it makes me feel better, I may not want it. That's, it's a very complicated answer. Most, most of the time when we take, when we go through menopause, which is usually when we need estrogen and testosterone, we gain weight. We become more insulin resistant. We became, become pre-diabetic. Every carbohydrate actually puts weight on us. Mm-hmm. So it is, is a big problem as we go past 40 toward menopause and after. Then... Uh, when we think about taking hormones and, oh my gosh, it might make it worse, right. that makes us panic. Well, in the form of testosterone and estrogen that I use, it doesn't make it worse. It makes insulin resistance better. It improves insulin resistance. So you don't, you aren't as sensitive to carbohydrates. You want, you don't gain weight from every carbohydrate gram that you eat. But- let me ask you to clarify mm-hmm. that because I, I'm not sure that I understand. There are multiple ways to replace uh, treatment protocols to replace yes. testosterone. Mm-hmm. Are you saying then that some of the other ways, not not pellets, pellets mm-hmm. is the way that you use, mm-hmm. but some of the other ways can actually result in some of these negative consequences that women want to avoid? Yes. And that pellets don't? Yes. Okay. That's so. what I'm saying. Most of the types of testosterone that women can take... Mm-hmm actually make more estrone, one of the old lady estrogens, that gives you belly fat and larger breasts and, you know, kind of a round body. But testosterone in like pellets... Like junky old ladies that we right, see on like, the street. Yeah. yeah, kind of what we view as old, an old right. body. Yes. Then, but, but testosterone pellets don't do that. I mean, I'm kind of an example of that, but that's, that's what they don't do. That's why we like them. That's one of the reasons mm-hmm. is that we get to get our body composition back. We get to get no- our normal size breasts, not huge breasts, long breasts, wide breasts. We then get to get our waistline back, get our hips so to do, size. Do you know why? I mean, why do the pellets compared to the other mm-hmm. delivery mechanisms? Does it have to do with the first pass effect? Does it have to do mm-hmm. with consistency of dosage? Uh, All does of it have that. to do with the compliance of the patient? I mean, mm-hmm. how is it that these pellets solve these problems that the other methodologies don't even uh, deal with? Well, the first pass effect is what you just you just said. The first pass effect is when you take something orally, a hormone orally goes through your stomach and it become and your liver, and it becomes other hormones, not just the hormone that you just took. So it becomes estrone, testosterone becomes estrone, dihydrotestosterone, estradiol. So when you're taking oral testosterone, you're making a lot of estrogen too. So when that happens orally, that's not a good thing. You gain fat, you gain weight, you get more insulin resistance. It doesn't give you the benefit of pure testosterone. So it gets converted. Uh, it, it starts as testosterone if you're mm-hmm. taking an oral pill. It goes into your system, going through the stomach and the, the liver, liver. And, and getting into the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. It gets broken down and converted into other things in addition to testosterone. Right. Whereas pellets, that doesn't pellets, happen. Pellets, that doesn't happen. Because the they first don't go through the, the stomach. stomach and the liver to, right. to get into the bloodstream. They are under the skin, in your hip, uh, in the fat uh, tissue of your hip. They dissolve and go directly into your bloodstream. 
they then work, they attach to the receptor sites mm -hmm. as pure testosterone, and they're not broken down until we're done with them. So at, at the end, a very small amount of the testosterone that we haven't used then goes back through the liver and is broken down into some of these things, but in a very small amount. So it doesn't cause that kind of problem. It's the same way, it's very similar to how we made testosterone in our ovary as women, that went out into the system just like pellets do. Right. It worked. And then when we were done with it, it went to the liver and got broken down. It gets broken down into estrone, estradiol, and DHT. So when those things are those things go into your system in small amounts, they then get broken down more and go through your kidneys to get rid of them. So it is not the same amount of those byproducts, and it's not immediate. Because it doesn't go through their stomach. So estrogen is broken into two components that are both forms of estrogen. Mm -hmm. Estradiol and estrone? Yes. And estradiol is the young woman's estrogen. And estrone is the old lady estrogen that comes from the adrenal gland, not your ovary. Okay. And um, as usually when we start getting fat around the middle as we're approaching menopause or at menopause, depending on our genetics, <coughs> as testosterone drops... Estrone goes up. It's kind of we're aging, so our testosterone is decreasing from our ovary, and our adrenal senses it, and it starts making more estrone, right. and it makes us look and feel old. Which is one of the things pellets counteract. Right. When pellets are placed into the system, and we get new pure testosterone in our system, it shuts down that estrone. Actually, you and my wife are having this discussion this weekend mm -hmm. uh, about the difference in the way she looks visually. Oh, she Over looks... Over the last five years since she's been on these pellets. Right. She just... Can I say how old she is? Mm -hmm. She sure. just turned 60. <laughs> I, that's okay with me. And she looks <coughs> like she's in her early 40s at the very oldest. Mm -hmm. And that's completely different. She, she was already starting when I first met her and at 50. She was starting to kind of look like the rest of us when we hit menopause before we get estrogen and, and testosterone. And and she was blaming all that on That doesn't on mean me. she didn't look beautiful. It just no, meant that well, her shape was changing. She was attributing most of those negative effects to living with me. Yeah, it's your fault. But now that she's found <laughs> we all this do that. other answer. <laughs> I took the heat she's off, didn't I? With it. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so all you men out there, you know, you can get the take the heat off if you get your wife on testosterone pellets. So but testosterone pellets alone won't get you back to lean normal. You also have to exercise and mm -hmm. watch your diet. Yes, you do. And, and we and tell so our patients that. We examine their diet and we examine their exercise program. So you can't just come into my office and go, well, I've gained 60 pounds. Is there a shot for that? Can yeah. I just have a shot? Yeah. yeah, can I just take yeah. a pill and it's over? Um, can, I've gained 60 pounds over the last 10 years. Yes. If I take pellets, am I going to lose this in four months? And I'm like... <laughs> No, because it's, it all depends on how much you are above your ideal weight. If you've gained a lot of weight, it's going to take longer. And if you are um, eating abnormally, too many carbohydrates, not enough protein, then I've got to change your diet to help give you the building blocks of muscle and bone because testosterone makes muscle and bone. So let me, let me step back for a second. When somebody comes in and they say, in the next four months, am I going to gain weight? Then I have to say, you will gain muscle and bone, which, which weigh heavier, more fat. than fat for right. the same volume, right. but you will shrink because you're going to lose fat. That's so disconcerting when people come in and talk about it. And I've been present for some mm -hmm. of these conversations. They will say, I'm, I'm upset because I got on a scale, I've gained three pounds, but I've lost two inches in my waist. And right. I don't know how to understand that. Mm -hmm. And so the, and if, if you have access to our book, we've written a book called The Secret Female Hormone. It's available on Amazon or you can get it at Barnes & Noble or major bookstores. Uh, or you can get it from the office. Mm -hmm. But in the book, we discuss all of this. And, and we talk about the fact that it's not a, a like a prison regimen that you have to go into, but you have to approach aging with some intelligence and some effort. It doesn't just come because somebody puts a pellet in you. That helps, and it helps you jumpstart your progress. But you do have to watch the way you eat, and you have to work out. You have well, to. But eat. I say it like this: You're not going to lose weight as you get older and gain muscle mm -hmm. and keep your bones thick without testosterone. 
yes. and without testosterone pellets. You're not going to be able to do that unless you do this. So you could diet all you want and exercise all you want, but you're going to lose muscle and lose uh, bone and gain fat as you get older unless you add your testosterone back. Mm -hmm. It's the one key to healthy aging. So that's so that's really the issue. The issue is you can try all these things, all these fad diets. You're not going to gain muscle and bone and lose fat. You're just going to lose fat and muscle as you lose weight, and then it's going to come right back on. Well, in the book, we, we discuss it as the domino theory. And we talk about the cascade of the illnesses of aging that begin mm -hmm. at a given point, and then things just start to happen. Pieces fall off, pieces break, pieces go back. Women notice that. They go, oh, what just happened? I just kind of fell apart one thing at a time. I started, got high blood pressure, and then I got fatter, and then I gained, uh, I got prediabetes, and then diabetes, and then everything started happening. And then my I cholesterol lost my went sex up. Drive, yeah, well, uh, yeah, that my too. My energy and my, my sense of myself. You know, right. my, my brain wasn't working the way I wanted it to the way I was used to it working. I mean, all of these effects of aging that when they hit you and you realize it or someone points it out, mm -hmm. you're stunned by it. You say, well, what can I do about that? But body composition is key to healthy aging. I mean, I, I am very um, adamant about my, pa my patients following a healthy diet, fresh foods, the diet that would work for them. I usually mm -hmm. use blood type to divide the types of diets that are the best for that person. So, but I also, every diet needs fresh food. Every diet needs fresh vegetables and fruit and meat and cheese and eggs at to some amount. And most of us need to eat fewer carbs. Yes. You still and have to have some carbs. The, yeah, we still have, we'll still have carbs even if we try to cut them out. But, but we need to have fewer carbs because as we get older, we're more sensitive to them. So first, we have to have the diet in place. We have to have an exercise program in place that includes lifting light weights mm -hmm. or doing some kind of um, weight training, even with machines or something right. like that, but not necessarily heavy weights, but weight enough to help build your muscle in the right place. The resistance training, because you, mm -hmm. you always talk about cardio, and, and everybody yeah. is aware of the importance of good mm -hmm. cardio. But what I have learned is you also have to do some resistance training mm -hmm. to keep your muscles firm mm -hmm. and to grow them if you need to grow them. Mm -hmm. And grow them in the right place. Right. You want them to grow where you want them to grow, not in other places. So, mm -hmm. so that then that plus the testosterone, then the testosterone is going to grow muscle and grow bone. What we do is we put people on an in-body machine, which gives them their body composition before we start them on testosterone. And so they go on, we see how much fat they have, fat percentage, how much muscle, where they have muscle and bone. Then we it's, it's an amazing machine. It actually tells you like your right leg has this much, it weighs this much, has this much muscle mm -hmm. and water. Your left leg has this much. They and so your dominant leg is mm -hmm. gonna be a little bit bigger. Your right arm, your left arm, I mean it, your trunk, it will compartmentalize your body and tell you where your muscles are located mm -hmm. and what they weigh and how where your fat, fat we is. Have and, and how much and belly ins inside our belly. Exactly. Abdominal, uh, uh, a mental fat. So that's the bad fat. So it tells you that. Then four months later, when you come back after you've had pellets for four months, which isn't a lifetime, but it's, it's enough that many patients have not lost weight, which is just gravity. But they've lost a lot of muscle, oh, excuse me, a lot of fat and gained a lot of muscle and bone. Yes. So their weight okay. is their weight is the same, but their body looks different. Well, and it's interesting. But as, a, as a new patient coming in, you get on the end body and you get a, a, a graphic presentation of all this information. Mm -hmm. That you take home that, with you. But you also mm -hmm. keep, in I the file, keep a copy. And you take a photograph. Mm -hmm. This is what you looked like the first time you came in. Six months later, two years later, there's a... A, a graphic visual distinction. Mm, yeah. Plus, every time you come in, you get on the in body again. So they're they're tracking the data of the body changes as well. Mm -hmm. And those are important because what often brings people in is a symptom presentation. I'm having these symptoms. Can you make these things go away? Like migraine headaches. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then they come back in six months later, four months later, and they say, well, I don't know that this is really working. And you say, well, did you have any more migraines? Well, no. Well, Do your well, joints still but, hurt? No. But, it, but it's not the pellets because I went on this new diet my sister-in-law told me about. Yeah, if, so. If I just take 
more kumquats and eat more kumquats, then I won't have migraines. I read about that in, in some magazine. Yeah. And, and so then Kathy will pull out their initial uh, paperwork and say, well, here it says. <laughs> you had all of these symptoms. Do you yeah. have those? Yeah. No. You go to well, the Well, that's not the diet. Yeah. <laughs> that's not, I mean, really, you came to me for one specific or 10 specific reasons. Right. If those specific symptoms are gone, then I did it with yeah. the testosterone. Right. And that's not something else that you could have tried at any time in your life and it never would have worked. But the, but the pellets made it work because that's the one element we need to safely help be healthy and grow old and get our body back because getting your body back's huge. That's Absolutely. Huge. So how often then does what's the typical range for uh, frequency? How, how often do I have to come in and get new pellets? See, that's an an interesting thing because women come in three times a year, men come in twice a year after we've got the initial dose figured out. Okay. So it's not a lot of um, me- remembering things. Like you don't have to remember this shot, pill, cream, whatever, once a day, twice a day. You don't have to remember so that. So I don't have any compliance issues with you that. You don't either. have compliance issues at all. You, I know what dose you get. It goes in. You can't mess with it. I mean, because I used to You can't to do, forget it. Oh, my gosh. I used to have so many phone calls. Patients would go, well... I was giving them creams and gels and vaginal tabs right. and sublingual tabs. And I'd get a million phone calls about, it's not working. And they were like really angry. So I... Oh, I, oh they'll call and say, I felt so good. I used a month's supply in three oh, days. Oh, that's right. On <laughs> testosterone creams, they I, I would never give that again because yeah. they would just slather it all over themselves. And I'm like, okay, so now you've got hair growing everywhere. Yeah. I mean, that's not a good thing. You have to follow directions, but... But most often, it was a um, a problem of non-compliance, not over-compliance. Right. So people would come in and say, they'd say, I'm bleeding. Did you take your progesterone? Eh, no, I didn't take that. I forgot. I, and I took my estrogen this day, but not this day. I mean, such a complicated history about what they did and did not do. And that is compliance. That's like um, if you go to your doctor's and you didn't take your blood pressure medicine for the last month and your blood pressure is high, uh, that's why. Because yeah. you didn't do it. It's not because the blood pressure well, medicine. Well, it's like a woman who says these birth control pills don't work for me. Because <laughs> she didn't take I'm them. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> they don't work. Oh, did you take them? No. <laughs> yeah. See, so so be very careful before you kind of get labeled noncompliant. Yeah. With your with your doctor, and if you don't want to have to worry about stuff like that, then you can come in, and we'll just we'll put the pellets in. You don't have to worry about creams, gels, sublingual, vag tabs. I mean, going on vacation, we just put them in your hip, and you've already got them. You don't have to take them to Africa exactly. or wherever. Yes. So one last question for today: mm-hmm. Is there a point at which I will age out of my ability to benefit from taking testosterone pellets? No. I mean, you will not age out. There are certain um, medical illnesses that people are told they can't take testosterone with. And is that because there's an issue with the illnesses or is that because the doctors don't, who are telling them In that? general, they don't really understand that testosterone, types of testosterone are not the same. When you say testosterone, right. it's not one thing. It's one of many types of testosterone and they all act different. So they think that it's like the oral testosterone. You're taking it, it's increasing your estrogen, so it increases your clotting. Well, pellets don't do that. And if estrogen goes up because of you genetically, we fix that. We stop it. So if they're not familiar with that reality, Mm -hmm. then they will say to their patients, A equals B, and that's why this is going on. Right. They don't understand it. Or, um, I mean, they, they might say that if you have erythrocytosis, which is the response of some men, usually men, to testosterone where they get a high blood count, they don't say, oh, well, just either donate blood or, or give blood and, and have it, it's called a therapeutic phlebotomy, dump it, you know. So it's hard to just donate get blood it like out. that anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, but, it's, but you can get the blood out of your system by doing that and still take your testosterone. But there's a lot of people that don't understand the parameters of what the Red Cross says. They don't care if you're on testosterone because... If you're on, especially our testosterone, it's just like an if you're a 30-year-old guy, you know, you've got the same level and the same kind of testosterone. So yeah, it's a misunderstanding of the doctor. 
but some but some people are concerned about it and that's fine and they stop but they don't feel good well and, and were i to stop for whatever reason right you just go back to then your whatever own. symptoms that i had that initially brought me in would recur right okay. you'll go back to normal your but it won't be worse and no it won't be worse it would it would be like it would be if you were 10 years older if you'd taken them for 10 years yeah and you're 10 years older you would have you would be making less testosterone than you were 10 years ago when the pellets wear off the testosterone still that you you make is still lower every year so, so it would be like dorian gray in the picture just suddenly you would age kind of yeah, yeah. so we have some um over 80 year olds that start pellets which is shockingly yeah. daring but they do great especially they're usually very vital 80 year olds now i wouldn't generally suggest that as you know, if you've already as a cure for being eighty, but it does make them feel better, and they usually well, I love can the do story great. That you tell about the eighty-year-old guy that came in in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. who owned properties and mm -hmm. had a life history of doing his own repairs for his properties. Yeah, he'd get up on ladders and and he was in a wheelchair and he couldn't get up, he couldn't walk. He had surgery, and then he couldn't get out of the wheelchair because he had hip surgery, and so. His daughter brought him in, and we gave him testosterone. And, you know, I think it was about a month later, he was out of the wheelchair with a walker. And about two weeks after that, he was out of the walker with a cane. And after that, he was climbing ladders. I mean, I, this guy just got his whole body back by getting the testosterone. It was amazing. I've seen that. And when I see older people not able to stand up straight, not able to walk with any balance. That's because they have no muscle. Or, or certainty. Having to use a walker or a cane or needing to, but maybe their their pride still won't let them, mm -hmm. but they're, they're, they're dangerous unstable. and wobbly. I, I just want to tell them, have you heard the good news? <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> That's right. This doesn't have to be the case. Yeah, you don't have to be like this. Yeah. It's real, it is hard for me not to say things to people, but I don't. Because that's intruding on their privacy, and right. they don't they don't need to hear that from me. Yeah. But they might hear it this way, or from their kids, or from their neighbors. <laughs> there is a treatment for that. Yes, there yeah. is a treatment for that, and that would that I'm hoping to have a life that's without wheelchairs and walkers, and so, I'm hoping all my patients do. So we started this conversation today talking about the fact that as we age, it is important and possible to continue to work to have good health. We want you to live healthy and be active right up to the point where you die. You know, we don't want you to gradually decrease your engagement with the world Disappear. because you haven't taken care of yourself. So please think about it. Yes. And as always, thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.